everyone, and welcome to this Glass Tire check-in. Uh, this is a series that we're doing during the coronavirus. Um, you know, one of the things is we just want to see people. I think that's kind of how we're all doing right now. Uh, but also, we wanted to check in with artists across Texas uh, that we know that we really love their work, see what they're working on right now, see a little bit of everything else. Um, today, we're checking in with uh, an artist who is actually part of Glass Tire's upcoming art auction that's to be announced soon. Uh, out of Wimberley, Texas, Jules Buck Jones. Welcome, Jules. Hi, how y'all doing? We're doing okay. Uh, you know, we're, we're managing here in Houston. I love your, I love what you got going on with your background. You got a good background game. Oh, thanks. Yeah, this is sort of like where all my sort of older projects kind of come to come to die so they get a little they get hung on the wall so to speak you know that seemed that's that took a more macabre turn than i thought it was going to but it works yeah it's like we'll call them retired a lot of retired projects on this wall this is the house studio right that's right yeah like recently moved out to wimberley which has been uh great it's beautiful out here uh we got a little bit of land which is really nice um and yeah there's like a sort of a carport, we'll call it. Carport slash apartment, we'll call it. That the previous owner, she was a professional seamstress. So this was like her little seamstress studio. Mm -hmm. And then I've kind of just taken it over. It's kind of a storage, storage slash production zone. It's, it's great. And it's right up, you know, it's a little bit, a little distance from the house, but you know, mm -hmm. right there, which is cool. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm kind of excited to, I'm a, oh man, I'm always excited to talk to you, but I'm kind of excited to talk to you right now because, I mean, your work deals with a lot of stuff that people are trying to get in naturally right now. Like everyone's going to parks, everyone's going to like wherever they can that's open, which is maybe, maybe not the best idea, we'll see. Uh, but your work deals with nature and it deals with animals and it deals with kind of being out of doors and kind of having this broader look at everything that's around you. And I was wondering if you could just take a little bit and talk about what you do and the kind of work that you make oh sure yeah um yeah i mean the work for the past 10 years has been uh focused on or sort of um i don't i'd, I'd say like kind of normal to to mysterious elements of the natural world normal being just you know kind of how magical really uh typical day-to-day -day events can be predator prey relationships mm -hmm. uh you know camouflaging just sort of but really kind of typical thing so you know and then sometimes the work can kind of take a little bit more maybe like mythological turns or you know focus in focus on maybe the more kind of supernatural versus the natural natural um and then so that you know those that's kind of what i stew on daily and then that comes into fruition in a number of ways. Mostly sort of, I make works on paper. So paintings and drawings um, with watercolors, inks, and like a variety of drawing tools. Um, that's where I feel the most comfortable, the most confident. That's where ideas kind of can flow. Well, and a lot um, of your stuff is super gestural also. So like you, you really kind of thrive with like the inks, almost even, I mean, I feel like it's, it's really like the inks that you can just like, take and kind of manipulate in any which way even more than like acrylic paint like you use that a lot less yeah yeah the ink in the water <clears throat> yeah the water media is like a, a the, the the ways in which i can kind of manipulate um them on a brush and on the on paper wet paper dry paper uh is really conducive to the the, the type of mark making that i've um kind of grown to you know to, to kind of rely on mm -hmm. <clears throat> um also working on paper is like is very very liberating to me or it feels like i can i can kind of work through a lot of ideas very quickly um well that comes out in the compositions like the compositions end up being like i mean it's it's like a jungle like rightfully so based on like the, the imagery you're using but it's like it's densely packed like canopies and forest floors almost yeah yeah great i mean and that's great yeah they get very dense very heavy and so like i need to use a paper that can kind of take a lot of beading a lot of layers um but also like i yeah i end up using kind of these rolls of paper because i can uh 
I don't know, there's something very, I don't know, there's com something comforting in, in a piece of paper that's like less comforting to me than a panel or a, or a stretch canvas. I'm working on some panels now at the studio and it's very different because you kind of have put a certain amount of time and energy into this blank slate and uh, mm -hmm. you know, start starting something on them is, uh, it's good, it's, the, it's a little more pensive, the, um, the creation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Ask the creating pro uh, process. So uh, tell us a little bit, uh, kind of some of the qualities that we were talking about is uh, actually the, the piece that you have in our upcoming auction is uh, I, I think a piece that exemplifies a lot. It has a lot going on. It has a lot of color. It's bright but dark at the same time. Would, would you talk a little bit about it? Yeah, uh, you know, I, so I, you know, recently moved out of Austin where I've been for the past uh, 13 years to you know get out into some get a little more nature in my life and a little less you know traffic or just get out of the hustle a little bit it seemed like a good time for that and i got this nice studio down the way it's kind of 20 minutes away from my house uh it's on this creek um it's got nice lights beautiful and so i can spend like my my passive creative time like when i'm not putting pencil to paper Mm -hmm. um, down there on the creek watching kind of frogs and herons and you know kind of everything I need I'm spending a lot less time on my phone looking for uh, you know resource my you know my source material you're now getting to actually kind of, like in plain air <laughs> yeah in a I way. Mean, not quite plain air but you're kind of seeing yeah like the amount of you know natural interactions yeah I'm seeing more so I have this small series of work, like kind of the first seven paintings I made in that studio with um, that piece being one of them that really feel, I don't know, they feel like a little, they feel like they're a little bit of a um, divergence from prior drawings uh, or paintings in that they rely a lot on uh, pastel. I'm using a lot of pastels in them. Mm -hmm. So the process now, includes not just the watercolor and the ink, but then the sort of like, the sort of like final um, nightcap of, of drawing on top of them. Uh -huh. That's a good way to describe it. <laughs> Cause I can use the colored pastels to kind of dig back into the ink, which typically is sort of a, uh, a one way road, mm -hmm. right? There's not much I can do to like a big puddle of black ink on a, on a piece of paper, but with the pastels, I can kind of, um, draw on top and almost uh, it almost simulates this idea if I depending on what colors I can use you can almost look like you're looking you, know, you can make these little pockets or windows these mm -hmm. faux windows into these darker uh, silhouettes of shapes and stuff so um, yeah that whole series sort of uh, relied on that process and it feels good because it feels good I the uh, Drawing with dry material, whether that's kind of graphite or pastel, um, I can get like a mark that has like a lot more, it's, it's a mark that I can't quite get with my brushes. So that, mm -hmm. you know, they play different roles, but I like the way they uh, work with, e with each other. Yeah, um, it's a, it's a yeah. different type of gestural thing. Like it's allowing you to do the same thing, but different. Yeah, absolutely. So then you just get a wider vocabulary in, in the work and, yeah, that piece is um, also doing something that's, you know, not super new to my work, but is a sort of a, a newer trend where you have this uh, kind of water line or some sort of a landscape, uh, some sort of horizon line mm -hmm. uh, that separates the picture plane into sort of below, you know, above and below, um, which formally is just a cool way to, you know, cut the, the picture apart. But then mm -hmm. also you get these different stages where you can kind of have these different, uh, you know, actors play out different, um, you know, smaller scenes um, in one thing. And then also try to tie it all together. But um, yeah, playing yeah. with that kind of watermark line is, is a really fun way. I feel like it's also a little, I like it too, because it almost feels like, uh, you can't tell if it's filling up. I, I, I feel like it has a sense <laughs> of uneasiness. Half empty, half full. Like, uh -huh. flood. Yeah, uh -huh. things are. Flooding up or so. 
That's cool. Are, are you able to work right now? Like, I, I know you're a professor at, at Texas State, but are you able to kind of still go to the studio, still get stuff done? Like, what's your, what's your day look like right now? What's your, are you working on anything also? And I, I, I hate to ask that question because I, I know that, it, that almost puts like a pressure, like I need to be doing something. But oh, right, right. What, are, what are you doing? Um... Yeah, so my, you know, the day to day are Monday and Wednesdays. I'm doing uh, video chats with students and kind of finishing out the semester. And I'm trying to gauge, you know, I think this time is very tricky for a lot of people. And, you know, I think there's like a collective sort of trauma that is occurring. So I'm trying to make sure I'm not overworking my students. At the same time, I want them to sort of, you know, get some, you know, what they need out of the semester. And, yeah, totally. that's tricky. But you know, my main compass for that is kind of trying to pay attention to how I'm operating in the studio. And usually, I we have not. I, I can I can kind of get work done pretty easily. It's uh, you know I've, I've built it into a routine now. Um, and yeah, there's something about this whole uh, the, the breaks kind of put on society that does sort of trickle out. I think to my my own personal creative process, which is okay. Um, but it slowed things down or it's, it's made things a little muddy or sticky. And I think just with the uncertainty of things and you're concerned for, you know, family and friends and, you know, you're, 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 my brain is sort of, I guess, preoccupied on, you know, other people's well being out there, you know, mm -hmm. so, you know, but that being said, I am eking out small little moments to make things. Um, and I think that's, helpful to kind of it's something to do kind of stay busy mm -hmm. also it's nice to like not let you know the engine cool down completely um i think I'm that's how be, a lot of people are operating right now yeah yeah i'm sure everyone's trying to figure out their own flow um and you know with a lot of projects you know with uh with other projects that i you know with mass gallery that i run like collective nonprofit gallery in austin you know, we had to put our brakes on our whole operation. Um, so we're using this time in, instead of like just trying to create more and more content, digital content to put online and change our structure completely. We're trying to use this time to focus on things that we never, we don't really allow ourselves to have time doing. So mm -hmm. today, later today, we're going to do, uh, we, we try to curate our, our um, calendar as democratically as possible which is a tough cookie but great and can be very um can be very uh, rewarding in a lot of ways so it was my studio practice i'm thinking yeah maybe it's not always about making more content per se or you know delivering paintings that don't really have a any place to go at the moment there's no yeah. over there's no like i have no deadline kind of creeping up so in I a mean, way it's, I'm a, to think, it's a holistic approach right yeah i'm thinking about i don't really ever spend a lot of time thinking about presentation so i'm thinking oh how can i sort of make some you know my how, what are my framing devices i could sort of use that could be different layer some installation ideas um maybe even tap back into some video which i haven't really worked with in a while but uh yeah. just ways to be i don't know a little more playful a little more uh raw and a little more you know be sort of go easy Mm -hmm. go easy on myself i'm going easy on my students i'm just trying to i think everyone could use a bit of easiness so mm -hmm. in, in that kind of intermittent time like do you have do you have a thing that you've jumped on right now like book podcast tv like are you going down the rabbit hole of anything i i mean ever since moving out to wimberley my my reading game has been real strong which has been uh <laughs> very rewarding i mean it's just been great i just you know certain activities it's hard to make time for reading unfortunately being one of them studying italian is also another one i was planning on going to italy this summer for a study abroad so i was really trying to get my italian game pretty strong but now that that class is canceled but i've spent all this money on tutors that i'm so i'm still doing that but uh yeah mm -hmm. i read recently read uh madeline miller's circe have you ever read that I haven't. No. Beautiful. She re she re she wrote uh, a song of Achilles, 
anyway, okay. um, mm-hmm. it was cool sort of retake on the mythological figure Cersei, who's uh, the witch of the Isle Aya, I believe it's pronounced, who she's the one who turns uh, Odysseus, Odysseus's crew into pigs. Anyway, mm-hmm. it takes, it's her story, but it takes, she's the protagonist, so it's through her eyes. So instead of this sort of, you know, so anyway, it's, it's beautifully written. Um, there's a lot of uh, uh, beautiful um, descriptive kind of words about uh, and, stand, and, and paragraphs of describing nature, plants, and animals. And so it ties a lot into my work or where I want, you know, kind of filling a certain, uh, filling my cup full of imagery so that's mm-hmm. nice i also read the under uh the, the overstory overstory recently. yeah you heard you read that i I've, I've heard of it oh my god yeah beautiful book uh okay and the two sort of have a lot in common in a way but the writing is really different it's just kind of fun to pay attention to, you know to how people uh construct you know worlds and stories and narratives and anyway it's been great so yeah, yeah um, uh it's nice to have time like that. Like a oh. little more, that, that's, that's the thing about this. Everyone has more time than normal and I think no one knows how to fill it. So I'm glad you're finding a way to fill it. Yeah, now that I've finished that book, I, you know, relying on the classics, Great British Baking Show. Uh, that's a, uh, you know, kind of rewatching some of those. Spending more time in the kitchen, cooking some pies, mm-hmm. uh, making some bread, um, going for walks. Um, Going for swims, we gotta like kind of go down mm. to the Blanco River. You can still get into down here. So, you know, looking at birds, saw just saw a hawk fly by my studio a little bit ago. Um, Audrey saw a dung beetle this mor- morning. Oh, a nice. dung beetle. Was it? The per- was it the per- <sighs> perfect spherical oh, piece yeah. of poop? It was pushing it. I didn't. I didn't even know we had those here. Um, we, she saw a coach whip snake this morning going through the, our garden. It's just really cool because we're seeing a lot. You see like animals on the daily and uh, and new flowers coming in daily. The wildflower season has been kind of cool. Mm-hmm. We're finding this interesting cactus in the yard. So I'm trying to draw more just in the yard. And I don't know. It's different. And like drawing in your sketchbook obviously feeds your my kind of larger studio work. But uh, sometimes you don't, you know, when you're kind of going with projects, it's hard to kind of get that you know, sketchbook time. Oh yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad you're having time. I'm glad you're still making stuff. I'm glad Wimberley's doing okay. And I'm glad you're doing okay in Wimberley. Yeah. 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 It's fun. Mm-hmm. Also, I got this risograph machine. Did I show you this already? Oh yeah. 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 So I'm kind of working on that. Uh, That's a good one. You got your hands I, on a good one. I know. I, I, yeah, I found it on eBay for a good price, but this is, <laughs> I don't know how to flip this, but I'm taking uh, friends. So I have my friend Drew Liverman send me like a one of his uh, marker drawings, and then I'm kind of working on trying to separate the colors, like CMYK. I don't have CMYK colors, but uh, anyway, mm. just trying to play around with some stuff. This is some paper that my parents made in Japan in the '70s. I just found, and <laughs> trying wow. to see how I. Uh, how the inks work with it because I just I inherited a ton when my father passed away. Here's some mm-hmm. new paintings, kind of just playing around with it in the evenings. I'm just giving you a quick studio tour. Here's no, this is good. Keep going. Dinosaurs. You know, here's uh, I got some pr- other print press stuff I'm trying to work on. I got this press from my father. Also, I got to clean it up. So, gotta call some people at the printmaking department, Texas State. Got this cool guillotine. Hmm. just all my animal facts club stuff i got like big alligator heads getting better at darts all of inspiration (laughs) you know playing some more guitar which is kind of fun yeah going back to the classics oh man anyway yeah so that's good well thanks for taking time jules (laughs) <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah this is great well it's good good to see your space i like to see what you're working on oh good yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well i'll take you to the other studio next time show you some of these cut panels that i'm working on are kind of fun sweet take it easy jules stay well all right
Cole, anytime. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank <music> you.